Next to a consequence of the cost of living crisis that is rarely spoken about, period poverty, that is the growing number of women who can't afford to manage their menstruation safely or effectively. The report found that 21% of women and people who menstruate in the UK struggle to buy enough period products, up from 12% in 2022. Of these, 60% had to prioritise buying food. And 37% used tissues or cotton wool instead of sanitary products, while others resorted to using socks or newspaper. And 41% of respondents said they kept their pads or tampons in longer, with 8% reusing them. Well, uh, with me here is Natasha Burgess from ActionAid, who's the charity who commissioned this research. Just tell me a bit more, Natasha, about the research itself. Where were the people and the women that you talked to? Was it just in the UK? Or... So, yeah, actually, if, if it's OK, I'd like to start by thanking you for getting us on, because right now, 300 million women across the world, including myself, are having their periods. And we don't talk about this anywhere as near as much right. as we should, right? This polling was UK. OK. OK, so this was women and people who menstruate. Um, but obviously, Action Aid is an international... That's uh, why I asked, yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think what we found interesting and desperately sad is that the impact of the cost of living crisis is one that has meant that the number of women and people who menstruate who are struggling to afford sanitary products in the UK has doubled in the past 12 months alone, right? So we often talk about the cost of living crisis in terms of heating or eating, yeah. but not in terms of bleeding, yeah. right? And how we cover that. So women, as you have discussed, are improvising. They're being very resourceful, but that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous, right? Toxic shock syndrome, infections, which in worst case scenarios can lead to infertility. Cost of living crisis is not uh, a, a situation that sits alone in the UK. This is worldwide. So, for example, if we look at somewhere like Uganda, because of the impact of the COVID pandemic, there has been a depletion in sanitary resources while the government and schools and families prioritise staple foods and things like that. Um, you, you talked about the health effects. I mean, there's kind of social consequences as well, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking here of, of people at school, school, school girls who, you know, if they, if they get their period, they, don't, they can't get hands on the right products, they might not go to school, or indeed women who won't go to work. I mean, it has consequences across people's lifestyles, doesn't it? You are. Uh, you're spot on, right? And if we look at, for example, Uganda, right, there is a, a, a camp for displaced people and there's a wonderful young woman called Razia, she is a feminist activist who goes into that camp and she shows young women and girls how to make sanitary products that are reusable. She reported back to ActionAid in Ghana that the majority of girls actually use dried cow dung and they fashion it into sanitary Goodness pads. Me. Yeah, right? And they use that and and this is because they are smart, they are resourceful, but clearly that is enormously dangerous. Very quickly, we have about 30 seconds left. What can be done in this country, do you think, to make it easier for people? In this country around the world, to me, uh, humanity is a global thing, right? Our humanitarian response. So let's look, at, um, let's look at providing for women in this country and women and girls across the world. You can do that. Go to our website, have a look at Share a Better Period. Three pounds will buy a sanitary pack for someone. Seven pounds will buy an education piece in how to make pads. 10 pounds will buy the time of a nurse to teach women and girls about their bodies. Great job. Boom. <laughs> Good to see you, Natasha. <laughs> you thanks, Thank thanks you. for coming in.